Secularization theory provides the idea that as society becomes more modern and more scientific, it becomes less religious. Education is often put forth as an important factor in the secularization of society. After all, education emphasizes science and reason over emotion and tradition. Or at least it does in most subjects. A non-religious person, such as myself, might think that the more one learns about biology and evolution, the less one needs intelligent design to make sense of the universe. The more one learns about physics, the less preposterous the Big Bang Theory becomes. The more one learns about psychology, the more one understands how profound experiences that are often interpreted in religious terms need not be religious or even mystical at all. The more one learns about geology, the less reasonable it is to claim that the earth is as young as many religions profess. The more one learns about other religions, the less certain one is that their own religion is correct, or even special. The more one learns about logic, the less convinced one is by theological arguments. These subjects aren't common household teachings, but they are taught in formal school settings, especially institutions of higher education. Therefore, it might be reasonable to assume that higher levels of education would correspond with lower levels of religiosity. But is this actually true? First, it's important to define religiosity. Pew Research uses four attributes to measure religiosity. The first one is a self-assessment of religion's importance in one's life. The second is religious service attendance. The third is the frequency of prayer. And the fourth is belief in God. Each one of these gets a score of one, zero, or negative one. So to give you some perspective on this, a total score of two or higher is a high religiosity score, a one to a negative one is a medium score, and a negative two or below is low religiosity. Other studies, uh, such as one conducted by Philip Schwedel in 2011, includes aspects of religiosity such as taking religious texts literally and believing that one's faith is the only true faith. But as I go through other studies and their findings, I'll say what exactly they were measuring. The results, it appears, are somewhat murky. Pew Research in 2017 found that in America, higher levels of education are linked with lower levels of religious commitment by some measures, such as belief in God, how often people pray, and how important they say religion is to them, but they also found that Americans with college degrees attend religious services at least as much as their less educated counterparts. Schwedel had similar and also contradictory findings, and he presents some of the strongest opposition to the notion that higher rates of education lead to decreased religiosity. He found that education negatively affects exclusivist religious viewpoints and biblical literalism, but not belief in God or the afterlife and that it positively affects religious participation, devotional activities, and emphasizing the importance of religion in daily life. The numbers vary depending on what groups are looked at. While the US population as a whole does seem to support the idea that education decreases religiosity, as college graduates are considerably less likely than those who have less education to say religion is very important in their lives, looking within religious groups paints a very different picture. Highly educated Christians are more likely than less educated Christians to say they are weekly churchgoers. Whether Protestant or Catholic, those who are highly educated tend to be at least as religiously observant as those with a high school diploma or less. The same is also true of Mormons. In fact, 92% of college educated Mormons are highly religious, compared to just 78% of Mormons with only a high school education. However, these patterns do not hold for Jews and for the religiously non-affiliated, people identifying as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular. More than half of Jews who have not completed college say they believe in God with absolute certainty, it's 54%. Only about 3 in 10 Jewish college graduates say the same, it's about 28%. And for the religiously non-affiliated, these numbers are 36% and 15% respectively. But rather than viewing this on a religion by religion basis, how might these figures change when looked at only through the lens of level of education? According to Pew Research in 2020, 
religiosity consistently diminishes across several measures as education increases. So to make this more simple, the statistics that I'm going to point out from this site, I'll just classify into groups. Uh, those whose education consists of high school or less will be referred to as group 1, some college will be group 2, completion of college will be group 3, and those who have a postgraduate degree will be group 4. The number of adults who believe in God with absolute certainty is 66% in group 1, 65% in group 2, 57% in group 3, and 52% in group 4. A similar distribution exists for the percentage of adults who say religion is a very important part of their life. For group 1 it's 58%, for group 2 it's 53%, for group 3 it's 47%, and for group 4 it's 46%. Those who pray on a daily basis, 57%, 57%, 51%, and 49%. The percentage of adults who say they look to religion most for guidance on right and wrong, 35% for group 1, 34% for group 2, 30% for group 3, and 28% for group 4. Those who say religious texts should be taken literally, 42% for group 1, 28% for group 2, 19% for group 3, and 14% for group 4. The percentage of adults who believe in heaven, 78% for group 1, 73% for group 2, 63% for group 3, and 57% for group 4. Interestingly, there appears to be a trend of the most drastic drop-offs typically being between groups 2 and 3, those who have completed some college and those who have finished college. And on all of these questions that I've mentioned, the percentages decrease with each increase in educational attainment. However, overall, there are a few outliers. The biggest is weekly attendance of religious services. All four groups have comparable percentages, 37%, 34%, 36%, and 36. I really wonder why this is. If one group is less religious, why are they still attending church? Perhaps they attend church less out of religious commitment and more out of a desire to participate in their community. But that's just speculation on my part. This also shows some other measures, but not all of them directly really have to do with religiosity. They're still interesting though, such as frequency of meditation. Those who meditate at least once a week, it's 40% uh, for group 1, 41% for group 2, 39% for group 3, and 42% for group 4. So it appears that people with postgraduate degrees meditate the most. However, I would argue that meditation doesn't have anything to do with religiosity. Another one that I found interesting was the frequency of feeling of wonder about the universe. So the percentage of adults who feel a sense of wonder about the universe at least once a week is 43% for group 1, 47% for group 2, 47% again for group 3, and 48% for group 4. So here, people with postgraduate degrees seem to be feeling the most wonder about the universe. Another interesting one is the frequency of reading scripture by educational group. So for those who read at least once a week, group 1 is 37%, group 2 is 37%, group 3 is 31%, and group 4 is 30%. Kind of interesting how even the more religious groups don't read scripture in equal proportion to how religious they are. And finally, let's see how that belief in heaven compares to belief in hell. So, here are the two charts. It appears that on average, people believe in heaven more than they believe in hell. And I would say this is clear evidence of the power of wishful thinking. Hell might not be such a compelling idea compared to heaven. Heaven is more about you're surviving your own death. Hell, it's about punishing other people. The percent of adults who believe in hell, for group one, it's 65%. For group two, it's 60%. For group three, 48%. And for group four, 40%. So in every single group, the percentage of those who believe in hell is drastically lower, at least 10% lower, but in most cases more than 10% lower than those who believe in heaven. What might we find if we compare the scientific elite with the rest of the population? In The God Delusion, evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins spends a portion of the book making the case that scientists, especially in fields of natural science such as physics and biology, are remarkably less religious than the average person. American scientists are less religious than the American public generally, and the most distinguished scientists are the least religious of all. A survey of the religious attitudes of fellows of the Royal Society of London found that overwhelmingly, the majority of fellows affirmed strong opposition to the belief in a personal god, to the existence of a supernatural entity, and to consciousness after death, and that biological scientists are even less likely to be religious than physical scientists, and were more likely to perceive conflict between science and religion. 
A similar study that investigated the beliefs of elite American scientists found that 7% of those elected to the National Academy of Sciences believed in a personal god in 1998, down from 15% in 1993 and 27.7% in 1914. So it appears there is a secularization trend in the elite scientists over time. More generally, other studies show a connection between high intelligence and low religiosity. One final area to look at is religiosity and education by geography. If religiosity generally decreases as education increases, then religiosity should be lowest in parts of the country and parts of the world where people are the most educated. In the United States, there is evidence of this. The majority of the most educated states are also among the least religious, and vice versa. Massachusetts, Colorado, Maryland, Connecticut, New Jersey, Virginia, Vermont, New Hampshire, New York, and Minnesota are the 10 most educated states in terms of the percentage of college graduates in the population. Six of these are among the 10 least religious states, and if you're interested, Massachusetts and New Hampshire are tied for 50th, Vermont is 48th, Connecticut is 47th, New York is 43rd, Colorado is 41st, Minnesota is 35th, Maryland is 22nd, New Jersey is 19th, and Virginia is the 14th most religious state. And on the other hand, West Virginia, Mississippi, Arkansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Nevada, Alabama, Oklahoma, Indiana, and Tennessee are the 10 least educated states. Of these, seven are among the 10 most religious states. Alabama and Mississippi are tied for first, Tennessee is third, Louisiana is fourth, Arkansas is fifth, West Virginia is seventh, Oklahoma is eighth, Kentucky is 13th, Indiana is 22nd, and it's tied with Maryland, and Nevada is 35th, and that one's tied with Minnesota. Does this relationship remain true globally? Pew Research in 2016 found that countries with high levels of educational attainment tend to have larger shares of religiously unaffiliated adults than countries with low attainment, and that at the global level, religiously unaffiliated adults are more highly educated than affiliated adults, as measured by average years of schooling. However, this is not the case across the board. Countries such as Georgia and Israel have high levels of educational attainment and high levels of religious affiliation. According to a Gallup poll, the 10 least religious countries, measured by the percentage of the population that thinks religion is an important part of their daily life, are Estonia, Sweden, Denmark, Japan, Hong Kong, United Kingdom, Vietnam, France, Russia, and Belarus, in that order. All of these countries, except for Vietnam, average a total of at least 10 years of education. All of them except Vietnam and France achieve at least 12 years. And for some perspective on this, an average of 12 years of education is on the high end. There are only 6 countries worldwide that reach 13 years or higher, and only one country that reaches 14 years, and that's Germany, which itself is quite irreligious. And on the reverse end of things, overwhelmingly, the most religious countries are those with the least access to education. Places like Niger, which has an average of two years of schooling, Mali, which is 2.3 years, Burundi, which is three years, Chad, which is 2.3 years, and Yemen, which is three years. So it would appear that this general relationship does hold true across the globe. While there is data that goes against the idea that higher rates of educational attainment have a negative relationship with religiosity, especially within some religious groups or on certain measures of religiosity, such as religious service attendance, it would appear that much of the data supports it. Low religiosity, where education is high, is not an exact rule, but it is generally a true one, whether by state or by country. The data are not as conclusive as an advocate of secularism, such as myself, might hope, but the overall trends nonetheless do show a connection between high levels of education and low levels of religiosity. Thank you.